If asked to name a classic Porsche, most would offer up the 911 as the prime example. Back in the day, the target audience for Porsche was limited to millionaires, yet by the 1980s, expanding the fan base to the less affluent became an urgent project if Porsche's success was to continue. And so, for the first time, the German car maker capitulated and collaborated with another car brand and, in doing so, gained a platform on which to build their fledgling affordable sports car. Many years later, these sporty 2 Plus 2s are a classic Porsche for those limited by budget, with the classic car market often overlooking and neglecting this fine example of Stuttgart's engineering. But not me, because 30 years ago I had my own Porsche 944 and I had no doubts about how good it was. So, to find out what it's like to reacquaint with an old friend, join me, Roger Bailey, in what for me was one of the 1980s greatest hits. And it's a big thank you to my friend and 944 owner Mike for allowing me to get acquainted with his perfectly preserved example displayed here in a resplendent white. And on display is a sharp design with these striking wheel arches accommodating aggressively wide track and these chunky sized wheels. What we are seeing is a signature shape from a confident era quite why in the following years it became one of the most underrated classic sports cars heaven only knows but thankfully today the 944 is recognized for having style and desirability thanks to its perfect weight distribution a rock solid drivetrain and delightful driving characteristics Despite this desirability, the 944 attracted criticism when first launched as it wasn't a traditional Porsche, being a far cry from that other Porsche model, you know, one with the iconic flat six rear engine. Yet little did that matter because in its heyday, this class act was the most successful sports car in the manufacturer's history with more than 163,000 examples produced. And having owned one myself, decades ago, I will wait no longer to fire up this tough four-cylinder bona fide Porsche engine. So, very first impressions are, well, it smells like an old car, unsurprisingly. Engine's smooth. It's not fast, steering is pretty sharp and pretty accurate, and the whole thing feels soft. Well, perhaps soft is a bit unfair. I'd rather say the suspension is compliant without transmitting any unexpected thumps or rattles. The steering is pleasingly pleasantly weighted and free from any play, and the brakes are effective, pulling the car up straight and true. And all told, this gently aging Porsche drives beautifully, exactly as expected of a low mileage, well-maintained example of what is, of course, a properly engineered, properly built German sports car. And I guess, therefore, we should stop mollycoddling this Porsche and get a move on, yes? Okay, so we're going to put our foot down now and just see what this glorious old car can do. On these near-perfect Welsh roads, we discover a dialed-in feel. Each of your inputs are mimicked directly by the car, just like all Porsches. Even back in 1985, Porsche got this right. You tell the car what to do, and it just does it, cooperating with everything you ask of it. Summon up more power and steering angle, and it just hunkers down and goes. It's not a car that shrinks around you, but it doesn't need to. The 944 is small enough 
to easily place and even at low speeds you feel a sensation of Porsche sports car DNA. And you can feel the sensation build as the numbers on the speedo increase. So as we push on some more, we find the 944 responds with a muted four cylinder growl from the smooth as silk engine. The motor has a fruity note beyond 4,000 RPM, spinning smoothly beyond 6,000 RPM with heartening vigor that contains not a trace of traditional four cylinder roughness. Okay, the engine's smooth as silk, but it's not that quick. But it's certainly not slow either. I remember being told this motor is half of a 928 V8 engine, which I thought was a cool 944 feature, albeit a peculiar contrivance. So what do we mean by that? Well, what I mean is the choice of a four-cylinder engine for such an upmarket car seemed odd, yet today I can see that this configuration plus its all alloy construction saved weight and space and being equipped with ingenious double speed balancer shafts it's a smooth as a six but of course still has a four pot exhaust note and with a relatively light but large capacity engine at the front Porsche placed a five speed gearbox at the rear giving the 944 its near perfect 50-50 weight distribution at a stroke, their designers had banished the Porsche 911's main floor, its rear biased weight distribution and tail happy handling. And now you can see the 944 starts to make sense. You see, it's this easy, predictable handling, which is the 944 point I really wanted to make. Okay, so I've got a few more points here to make. You see, I might be getting you tempted by now and by spending time in this one, I'm certainly getting the urge to buy one now as well. Okay, so we've got the 944 Bug now, but what should you look out for when you're buying one of these? Well, you're gonna need a budget because it will cost money to keep, meaning buying the very best maintenance history is number one on your checklist. And that checklist includes ensuring the timing and balancer belt is pristine. Why? Well. The 944 has an interference engine, meaning different moving parts can be in the same place during the rev cycle. So change that belt at intervals not exceeding five years or 30,000 miles. Check oil has been changed every 6,000 miles, particularly on the earlier cars. Any vibrations on idle could be the engine mounts, head gaskets can go and listen out for transmission wine. Oh, and clutches last 70,000 miles and they are expensive to fix. Any other tips? Well. Don't touch the trip counter when on the move or the little plastic cogs will self-destruct. Replace the DME relay regularly to avoid the common electrical gremlins that you can get. Protect the dash top in hot sunny countries because they crack and replacements are scarce and check those sills for rust. Official Porsche centers are an excellent source of original parts. Everything is available from an OPC, often at prices that beat independent suppliers. And so, should you buy one? Well, with 944s gaining value, there's been no better time than right now to buy and enjoy yourself in this affordable and super cool way into classic Porsche ownership. When I was considerably younger, I was blown away by the 944. Fast forward to today and we find this car is, well, it's no longer a fast car. What it is, however, is a joyous experience. It feels and drives like an antidote to today's driver-aided, hefty, nannying cars. It's a car that connects the driver directly with the control interface, feeling nimble and transparent in all that it does. As more people discover the magic of the 944, the more desirable an ownership proposition it becomes. And for me, it replays in glorious analog, one of the 1980s greatest hits. So, thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please feel free to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And comments are always welcomed. I read every single one and I reply to most. And if you hit this little notification bell, you'll know when I've uploaded the next video.